There we go. All right, everybody. So feng shui and, and interior design. All right, we have a few more people coming in. Let me get them in. All right, welcome. I'm so excited to see y'all today. Um, I'm gonna light a candle. Y'all know me, I like to start with an intention. Getting that done. Okay, y'all take a deep breath. Just settle into the present moment. We use fire to set intention in feng shui because it's one little spark can ignite a wildfire, right? Take a deep breath. Take your deepest breath you've taken all day. I will too. I'm just going to set an intention that we have a great conversation today and call where you learn a lot and... I'm just going to intend and state that I am an open vessel for the best communication I can offer. Um, so we're intending clear communication, clarity all around, um, fun, and new knowledge and understanding, um, maybe even igniting some passion here. I have a feeling there's some people that really like interior design, so I'm excited to have you. And... Um, We'll call on the feng shui masters to be here in spirit to facilitate this hour together. Yeah, and I just hope y'all learned something and, and thank you for your time and I hope you get what you're looking for out of this call today and more, all right? So um, y'all know me, I like to feel in, make sure we got it all, hold on. Yeah, just take a couple more deep breaths. Some of y'all need to get a little more present. We don't we don't know what's gonna happen today, you know? Even two deep breaths will help you. There we go. Good job. Don't take for granted taking a moment to take a couple of deep breaths. It is worth it. I feel like the energy just kind of settled. Um, so thank y'all again for being here. We're going to be talking about feng shui and interior design. Yay. And just for those y'all just showed up, I did get a little skin cancer removed last week. So hence the band-aid. <laughs> I have stitches under there and I'm very happy to have that done. So, all right. Okay, let me get y'all to where so I'd love to know let's just start off with this if you have specific questions if you do I want to see them already because I want to kind of embed those in um this is actually the first time I have taught interior design <laughs> I mean I teach it in the odyssey and in the wind horse certification to an extent is kind of embedded in the program, obviously, um, because feng shui and interior design are really, they, I mean, I, I just have to say crossover. They're not the same thing, but they cross over like a lot. So um, I want to give you a little bit of my background with the interior design aspect of feng shui so that you know where, um, you know, I'm your source today. So um I just want to give you a heads up on that. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I'm so happy y'all are here. And feel free, you know, I feel like everybody's eating lunch or something like that, which is great. I'm just glad you're here. But if you feel like showing us your face, that's fine too. And if you want to put in the chat where you're writing in from, I love seeing where everybody is. We got California. We got East Coast, Virginia Beach. We got our Birmingham folks. It's awesome. All right. Sharing screen for the PowerPoint. Y'all ready to play? Let's do it. Let's do it. So here we go. Feng shui and interior design. Y'all know I do these free Zoom at noons every first Friday of the month. So thank you for showing up. It's free. It's fun. And y'all can always, y'all, if you ever have any questions about anything I ever talk about or write about or anything feng shui, just send me an email and put in the subject question. <laughs> Because I might do a whole program on it. Like I just go intuitively with these ideas. And um, 
I'd love to hear what y'all think. I would really love that feedback. So please email me if you ever think there's a topic that might be good for me to speak about, okay? So we're going to be talk, focusing on color and layout today. That's just two major aspects of interior decorating or design. And um, I love both of those because they're such a big deal. All right. So again, yay. This is my first time teaching interior design head on like this. So I'm excited. I like to I like to create new stuff. So here we go. That's what you're going to be getting. So let me give you my background in this. All right. I'm going to start from way back, little baby Katie. Um, color, I, it's just been part of my life since I can remember. And I'm talking like, I would just paint color wheels all the time. Like I just loved painting the color wheels. I loved mixing the, you know, those little dinky watercolor sets you get when you're like four. I would be, I would mix those colors. I was obsessed with the way colors mixed, even from a very, very young age. So color is part of my DNA. I would say it was part of my DNA. So um, I just wanted to give y'all that because, um, well, you'll see where I'm going with this. And I'm loving seeing all the people show up. If you just got here, please mute your uh, microphones because we'll have time for Q&A towards the end. Um, okay, so again, baby Katie loved color and I just loved painting, really. All, all of that stuff when I was little. Crayons, all of it. Um, then in high school, you know, my friends from home, Mobile, Alabama, they think of me as an artist because that's what I've, honed in on in high school is painting and drawing and all the artsy art stuff like uh two-dimensional you know what you think of a traditional art um so I'm telling y'all this because I think it's helped me with interior decorating um and it spills over obviously I'm highly visual um and color is a language it is a language that's what I stumbled upon when I started studying feng shui. So um, we'll probably get into that a little bit today. So, okay. Then I went to college. I went to Vanderbilt and I became an English major. Actually, I was a psychology major and I didn't like multiple choice tests. <laughs> and I liked writing better. So I switched to English. Um, I really wasn't career motivated as a student. I really just wanted to take whatever classes I wanted to. And I'm glad I did it because when I look back, everything pointed to feng shui <laughs> and filmmaking, actually, um, and writing. So I did take some art classes, though, from some professors up there, and I did love it. And it was fun. But uh, and they didn't have much of a film program, though, but I took those classes, too. But no interior decorating. There wasn't they didn't have that at Vanderbilt. I would have taken it if they had. So um, that that basically I've, I've dabbled in the arts, y'all. And of course, my like the last week of college, one of my creative writing professors asked me what I wanted to do <laughs> with my life. And I said, live. Because <laughs> I didn't know. I did not have a career path at all. Because guess what? Here I am, a feng shui consultant, teaching feng shui with a feng shui school now. I didn't know what feng shui was. That didn't exist in the college curriculum, even close. So now I see that I wasn't a lost soul. I just hadn't discovered it yet. So it's kind of, I don't know if y'all have heard me tell the story or not, but that's what happened. And I know y'all are like, I signed up for interior decorating, but I want to, I feel like it's important for me to give y'all this. So then after college, um, I traveled some and took odd jobs wherever I could and literally waited tables and whatever. I did a bunch of stuff. That's all new stories. But um, I ended up um, moving to Austin, Texas. I had a lot of friends moving there and I'd got a job in, in a publishing company editing English, like English literature textbooks. And um, that's, I had been traveling in the most beautiful places in the world pretty much. And then I got off the elevator to go to my job and it was just a, y'all have heard me say it was a sea of gray cubicles and fluorescent lighting. 
And I worked there in my little cubicle and the people that worked there were awesome. I loved all the people, a lot of creative people, interesting people, but my gosh, it was like, you would think that there had been a death sentence put over the whole space. And I've just realized, so I started doing some things to my cubicle, making it prettier or fun, more color. I think y'all know that I put, um, I found some wrapping paper, literally, that had smiley faces on it and like put it up on my bulletin board. And people would start visiting me more <laughs> in my cubicle. And one day at lunch, I was eating lunch off site with some co-workers and I go, y'all have the best idea for a business. Go into businesses and make it prettier. And then that's going to help people be happier and they're going to work better. And the it's going to help the bottom line of the company. I just knew it. I was like, nobody has to work in this ugly place. It's ugly. It doesn't help anybody. It was like a thud when you walked off that elevator to that floor. Um, and I thought I was so smart. I thought I invented the most amazing thing on the planet. And then I went to the bookstore and looked in the interior decorating section and I see a book on feng shui. Okay, in the interior design section. So that's important, right? And I read that one and that's what I was like, this is what I was talking about. How your environment affects you and how powerful it is. And then the nuances of the feng shui stuff, I was just hooked. And so I didn't even, I did not pursue interior decorating. I pursued feng shui, as y'all know. All right, let's talk color. Is everybody with me? I don't see any faces, so I'm just, everybody good? Put in the chat. Yep, I'm good. I'm here. Just say hello. Tell me if you like my story or not. Tell me if that's the first time you've heard that story. I don't know if y'all have heard it or not. Yay. Good to see you, Callie. Yay, Rachel. Yay, Leslie. I don't know about that, but you're sweet to think so. Um, everybody go see Steel Magnolias in at Virginia Sanford Theater at in Birmingham. Leslie is in that production. Just had to plug you, Leslie. All right. Favorite color. Y'all write down your favorite color in the chat. It can be on this wheel or not. It does not matter. If you have a favorite color or colors, write it down. Something you're always drawn to. I, I love seeing everybody's favorite color. Just so everybody knows how excited I get. I mean, do y'all see that even seeing what people's favorite colors are when you see it written down? is saying something about them. I just love it. Mary, I'm wearing milk light pink for you, baby. It might be a little too light. I don't know. Greens and deep burgundy, lilac, mmm, lilac, mustard, amber. And amber, your name's amber. Rachel loves blue. Kylie loves chartreuse. Uh, amber, good answer. Depend what it's on. Audrey loves orange. Matisse loves blue green. Me too, Matisse. Jill loves blue. Tina loves green. Okay. Mary, you love most colors. Me too. Red and turquoise. I'm with you, Donna. Yellow and aqua and red. Leslie, me too. I love my turquoise. Okay. Green and pink. I know. See, isn't it fun even just to think about colors? It is some, there is something innocent in it. Like it does, I think it's such an early language. That's what I wanted to tell y'all about when I was five. <laughs> and mixed colors in the preschool and the kindergarten okay let's get a little bit let's go past the kindergarten level all right so I don't want y'all to get too hung up on this okay this is not my language but it is language of color <laughs> I don't use these words that often okay but hue is basically the color if you say if I say what's your favorite hue that's the same as say uh, what's your favorite color <laughs> pretty much okay um, it's a spoke on the color wheel. So let's go back. So this would be the hue of blue. This would be the hue of blue green. Okay. This is a hue of red moving on to pink. All right. Saturation is the intensity of the color. Okay. Um, it's also referred to as chroma purity or richness. Something that's fully saturated is the most intense form of a hue. Here we go. Do y'all see my marker? See on this, this is the value scale, but that red is the most saturated. Right here is the most saturated on the left, all right? And then it lightens in saturation. It's not saturated over here, all right? 
Easy. It's just the clarity of the color, pretty much. All right. Then the value is the lightness and darkness. All right. So saturate, let's go back to saturated. You can mute or dull a hue, okay? Or lighten it. Why does this matter? Well, let's see. All right. We're going to go to warm and cool now. All right. Y'all remember this, right? Who loves color like me? Who just even loves this conversation like me? Like I actually get really excited. So the warm colors are the reds, right? And yellows, right? As soon as you add a little blue, you're kind of dancing on that line or is it warm or is it cool? This green right here has more yellow in it. So it's gonna be a little bit of a considered maybe a warmer green, even though it does have blue in it. So green is the in-between color y'all, okay? That's why it represents balance. And that's why it's so nice that we see it in nature. I'm looking outside at the green right now. And that's the balancing color, okay? It's, okay, now purple has the blue and the red, right? So you can have hot purples. This pinky purple is a little more hot, okay? Hot, warm, okay? All right, that's easy, easy breezy. Y'all all know that. I just felt like putting this up. Sorry that it's a little blurry. It's just kind of interesting to see. Some of these, some reds can be considered cool if they have a blue undertone, right? So y'all hear about that in makeup. You could wear a red that has a little bit of blue in it. So even though it's a warm color, it can have undertones. So we're getting a little bit past, you know, what I really plan to talk about, but um, it is important. Actually, I'm going to talk about it, but not with all these different colors. Okay. Browns are considered warm, right? Can't you see how they might be on kind of a scale of yellows? All right. I'm just going to keep going. All right. Let's look at, I brought up the grays because <laughs> guess what? It's such a popular color in paint these days. And I do think knowing your warms and cools will help you with your interior decorating. I've I've gone in a kitchen before that had this, the colors were all pretty, but the marble they put in the kitchen was a cool gray. And then they put a warm off-white gray on the wall and it just didn't feel, it doesn't tie it together. That's why I'm honing in on this a little bit because sometimes if you have a little bit of awareness of the warm and cool with the saturation and all that stuff that sounds a little brainy. Um, well, from my perspective, it can help explain to a client, number one. And number two, it can help you eliminate, right? So grayish, that's the color I love. Some people might be annoyed by that term grayish. I love it. It means gray and beige together, which is... Um, if you're going for neutral walls, a grayish is a wonderful way to go. It's very neutral. I mean, if you look at the sky, I'm looking at the sky today. I mean, grayish is an earthy color, right? It's a, it's, it's not invasive. Like if you just want a wall to kind of disappear and to be able to play, it's just a neutral without going stark white. Okay. So grayish is pretty much always going to be a warm gray. Now, listen. I know these have the titles on it. You cannot trust a screen ever. I'm so glad I thought to say this. Don't ever pick a paint color from the screen. Ever, 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 ever. Everybody's screen. We all are seeing a little bit different things right now. Okay. So um, here we got some grayages. And then we got, these are still, oh no, we got a mix of the brands. So that's Benjamin Moore. I love Ben Moore. Um, Sherwin-Williams, I'm familiar with Sherwin-Williams. I don't use it as much as Benjamin Moore colors, but I do like it. Um, some of these are cool. I've actually used Gray Owl before with people and myself in a different house. I've used Stonington Gray. It's gorgeous, but it's gorgeous in that house, okay? And then check it out. Look at these. You might look at this chart and say, Katie, that's not gray. That's That's like blue green or that's kind of purpley pink or that's green but I guarantee you if you didn't have all these circles around this color to compare it to you would walk into a house and say that was gray 
you might be tuned in enough to say it has a green undertone. Okay. I'm going to just be flat out honest with y'all. <laughs> Some of y'all are colorblind. <laughs> Some of y'all are colorblind. There are, color there are people who are colorblind in the world. I've had to learn this a little bit the hard way. <laughs> so, um, but in all, in all honesty, some people are more trained to color than others. And some people have, it, it's kind of like my daughter. She is a music person. She will hear stuff. She can hear more of a range than I can. She can't stand if there's a car with bass a mile away. She makes me roll up the window and turn. I, I don't even hear what she's hearing. So it's the same with vision. I can see all the colors. Okay. So it's another reason I probably love it is because I can see all the nuances. Some of y'all might not be able to, and it's okay. I don't care that I can't hear the bass. I'm glad I can't hear the bass. I don't want to be bugged by the bass like she is. So just so you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it, it's okay. I, I'm not, I don't know enough about this, but it's not, there's nothing wrong with it. But some people can see the nuances of color more than others. And some people are just flat out colorblind, you know, um, like my dad. He can't see the difference in green and red. I can't even fathom. So, um, but y'all all know this and, um, and it is what it is, I guess. Okay, but now you see, you can look at these different grays and say, okay, well, is this a cooler? Like up here, that's a cooler gray. If it has more blue in it, it's, it's cooler. If it feels like it has a little more yellow in it, it's warmer. That's how you can break it down. Blue is cool and yellow is warm. How, how are y'all doing? Y'all hanging with me? It's so weird for me to be, do PowerPoints because I can't see y'all. And I, I'm going to look at y'all's. I like y'all's um, comments. Comment if you want. I love that you love color, Lessie. Me too. Yay, Amber. Color wheels are the best. I mean, I, I sometimes just do color wheels for fun. If I have my paints out, which I haven't done in a long time, but they're kind of um, cathartic. Um, excuse the dog. I think there's a there's some wind. <laughs> there's just some wind. <laughs> okay. All right. Assess the palette. Y'all ready? Y'all ready to look? Is this a saturated palette or not? Write in the chat or what do y'all think? I hope we're not getting a tornado. All right. Welcome to Alabama, right, y'all? Right in the chat. Yes, Tina, it's saturated. Ooh, thanks, Mary. I'll write down the questions if they come up. I'm going to do that. I, we're doing that. Don't worry. Yes, Audrey loves it. She likes some saturated color. Who likes this palette? Who would dare for this palette in their home or their clothes? Love it. Oh, love it. I know. Look at those bold colors. Matisse, we'll see you in a second. I love y'all's chats. Thanks for playing. Audrey loves it. Kylie loves it. Let's see. Those are your colors, honey. Clothes for sure. Nice. Okay. And Sabrina's like, nope, but Sabrina likes the lilac. So we all are different. Thank you for speaking up if you don't like it. Because guess what? That isn't for everybody. And that is wonderful. <laughs> okay. We can like what we like. This is why there are so many different options when you decorate. All right, let's, okay, so warm or cool. What do y'all see mostly, warm or cool? Yep, it's more of a warm palette. We got a few blues, a little bit of greens to kind of, you know, take it down a little bit, just bring a little bit. But you can tell a lot, y'all, by covering up your screen with your hand and just cover up that blue pillow and see how different it feels. That one little blue pillow balances it. Okay, so sometimes you can think of it like that, like, oh, I just need a little bit of cool to, so it's not so fiery. Okay, do you see different values are the same? Okay, so this is, oh, well, I have what it, what's the main hue? If y'all could say what the main color, the main hue is, what would you say? Like if you just glanced at this and like went away, yeah. I would too, Rachel. Red is such an intense color that if you're going to be using it a lot, you're probably going to be like, 
you're probably going to like, say you just glanced at this and then went somewhere else and somebody said, hey, what colors was in that so-and-so's house? You would say bright colors and you say, I know there was a lot of red. Red catches the eye, the first. So remember it's the power color in feng shui, Tina said red too. Yep, red is kind of the color that is bringing it all together in a lot of ways. Okay, but you'll see what I'm going to do. I'll show you the other ones so you can see. All right, and then different values, are they the same? So that means, remember saturated is that clear tone, values would be lighter or darker than the saturated clear tone. What do y'all think? Okay, I'll just tell y'all. Similar, good, thanks Sabrina. Yep, this is a saturated palette mostly, but you'll see there's a tiny bit of burgundy. See, look, the palette's right here. Don't y'all love when they do this? I do. <laughs> I love when they pull the palettes out. Um, there's like a burgundy, which is a muted color, a muted red. They add black to red, basically. Okay, that's burgundy. And then, of course, we got the white, the off-white. Thank goodness, right? It's nice to kind of just have a total neutral there. Um, even the mustard, I mean, it's saturated. It's pretty darn saturated. So um, it's mostly saturated. There are different values of both the red and yellow in the pillows. Yep, a little bit, right? But it's a saturated palette, we all agree, for the most part. Here we go. Is this saturated or not? Thank you, Tina. It is not saturated. So y'all see the difference? This is a muted palette. And how lovely is it, right? I mean, maybe y'all don't like it. I don't know. Right? Okay. So um, <laughs> what's the main hue? What would y'all say the main color was? Mm-hmm, Audrey, yep. I was just telling um, some of my Odyssey ladies that uh, your bedspread is such the major feature in the bedroom. So it's really the, the decor anchor of a bedroom. And so that, you know, that pink is going a long way. The wood is dominant as well. And don't y'all think it's interesting when you pull a palette out that the um, material becomes a color. This is important. The material becomes a color. They could have had metal, a metal bed, like a white iron bed, you know, or something. That would have been totally different. Think of an upholster bed. They don't have to have all that wood in there. That created a palette. Okay. So what do y'all think? Different values or are they the same? Oh, we didn't do warm or cool. But let's do the values first since I already asked it. Well, they're all muted and they're all kind of similarly muted. You know, you can't really determine that exactly, but they're definitely no saturated and there's not much dark. So the value is pretty similar. All right, warm or cool? Or both. Tina, you see it as cool. What, what does everybody else see? It's so fun, isn't it, y'all? What do y'all see? You know, quiet. Y'all chat away. The gray is for sure cool. Thank you, Audrey. That is, y'all are right. There is a lot of gray. But look at this palette down here. These pinks and that wood color is warm. So really it's both. And I think it's pretty well balanced actually. And it's nice to have both. You don't have to have one or the other. I wanna be real clear on that. When I talked about that kitchen, okay? It just has to be strategic. You want, you might want both. Let's go look in the next one. Ooh. The walls make it cool to you. Definitely, Leslie. Let's go back real quick. 
Yep, those light, light gray walls are a coolie, icy even, right? All right, let's go to this one. I had to put my turquoise in. All right, so saturated, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Tina. On the ball, Tina. What's the main hue? The main hue is turquoise. Yep, thank you, Audrey. Yep. So is this warm or cool? Christine, you love it? Me too. Isn't that pretty? I'm a turquoise girl though. Not everybody would like this. Cool, it's very pretty. It tends towards blue, right? So there is a cooler feel. It definitely calls forth the ocean. But we do have some nice reds and those greens, you know, to bring in the warmth. Okay, I'm glad y'all enjoy it. And now look how different, how different can a room be? Let's just go back. <laughs> this is what's so fun, y'all. I mean, look how different. And I got to tell y'all, I love both. I love both. Not in the same house, probably, but okay. Of course, this looks like a little girl's room. Aqua. Leslie says aqua's warm. Yep. I know. I know how you feel, Leslie. Well, remember, it's a blue green. So it's really both because it has yellow and blue in it. All right, let's talk about this pink room. I just gave y'all the main hue, but y'all already knew it. Is it saturated or not? Not. Good. Warm or cool? Warm or cool? Or both? both. Mm -hmm. So red is warm, obviously, but with this much white added and that level of white, it's such a clear white. There's That pink is not very muted. Its value is more on the white scale. So it might feel cool too, because the white is cool. All right. That white, now there's off-white on the headboard and that's a warmer white, but see the desk and the bedspread, that's a cooler white. So how, how, how interesting, right? And it's not, y'all, you do not have to go into a room and say, is it a cooler? There, it's, this is just something for y'all to know. It can help when you're playing around with colors. It can help, okay, when you're finding palettes. And Mary asked a billion dollar question, what's the best way to figure out what color you want? We're gonna play with that. Okay, here we go. I told you <laughs> how to pick your colors. <laughs> Who's excited? All right, this is the fun part, right? So y'all see that one of my favorite things I own. I was so excited when I went to a paint store and they knew I was helping a client and they said, let me just give you one of these. And I was like, yay. Okay. I love it. So fan deck, color deck, right? These are handy tools. Now let's see what I wrote in the, let's see what I wrote on the PowerPoint. What are you drawn to? All right. Well, you already said your favorite colors, right? So my sister sent me this. This is one, If you have a friend who likes any kind of art, here's a present you can send them. I can't even tell. She didn't know what she was doing. 100 postcards by Pantone. Okay. So I actually take these. I never send these as postcards because I want to keep them. And I take them to a client's house and I just take a bunch out. And I just say, show me your favorite colors. We start with that. Why would you do anything that's not your favorite colors, y'all? I bet some of y'all do that, but I bet some of y'all don't. Your favorite color, you can do whatever you want, y'all. 
You can do whatever you want. I love it when you play. Um, and if you want neutrals, that's great too. Let me tell you my theory on why neutrals have become so popular. It's because we're also, the, neutrals are earth colors and earth is nurturing in feng shui, okay? Anytime a color is muted, it's considered earthy, right? So I think because we're so busy, <laughs> we're so busy in the outside world that when we come home, we just want to kind of be held. So the nurturing colors, the, the earthy colors are great too. Now, some of y'all are going to feel better with more color, but it's great to have neutrals, okay? I just want to add that in because sometimes you're like, well, Katie, gray isn't my favorite color, but I want it in my house. And I'm like, well, there's reasons for that too. So you start with what you're drawn to. Um, now, Mary, since you asked the question, you know I get to ask you to elaborate on your question. If you have something you're working on, I would love if you put it in the chat. Um, or if there's something specific. Y'all, how does this go by so fast? I don't understand. I can't even understand. It goes by this fast every time. I think because I just have so much fun with y'all. What are y'all drawn to? What feels good? Okay, everybody, listen. If you go on Pinterest and start pinning your favorite things, you are going to find themes. If you pin the turquoise rooms every time, hint, hint, okay? You might say, Katie, I have such a range. That's okay, too. You will find crossovers, okay? Now, sometimes it depends on the room, right? Sometimes a room will call for a color. All right, assess the lighting. Okay, so here we go. Remember how I said, don't look at a screen, right? Um, when you're picking a color, well, same thing. Um, please don't pick a color from this at the paint store. You need to get the piece of the, you need to get the sample. You need to get yeah, the actual liquid form of the color you're thinking and get a few similar to it. And then maybe one or two that like you just want to try that don't even seem like they might not might work. But you gotta you got to try a few because and you gotta bring it into your your room you're working on and you gotta put it on several walls because colors will change color according to the wall. Okay. So please do that. All right. The lighting in your space will change a color a hundred percent. It will actually change the color. I actually think that if I went to go study colors. I would study how colors change when they're put next to a different something and then also how they change in light because it's dramatic, all right? Bring home samples. Colors change dramatically in the light. I didn't even know that was next. Okay, find a jumping off or inspiration for your palette. So I love it. Cal I, she said, I noticed years ago that I had so many rooms pinned with a green velvet couch, so I got one. Thank you for that example. Exactly. Like, great, great. Get your green velvet couch. You will not be tired of it because you love it. Some people get afraid to get something that bold, but if you love it, you're never going to get, you're not, you're going to be excited that you took, did that for yourself. I tr trust me. All right. So find a jumping off or inspiration for your palette. Okay. All right. Let's use Callie's green sofa. So if she's going to get a green velvet couch, she's got to do the room around it. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty obvious. All right, she's going to find a palette that works with that sofa. You're jumping off an inspiration can be a painting. You know, it can be a, a color out of the painting. Like if you know you want a certain painting, it can be a lamp. It can be, um, well, let's see what I wrote. Okay, and then play with the palette. So then you add different colors and subtract. That's why I like these because you can, you can be like, ooh, I like, um, Ooh, I like this green with, you know, well, actually I like that together. I wouldn't have thought about that. But once you start playing with it, you get ideas, you get inspired and it all starts to come together, okay? And then ask a friend who knows, hire a pro. And then you're gonna want feedback, okay? Guess what? Professionals even get feedback. Like you have to, you have, it's fun. It's fun to talk about it with somebody. Ideas start to happen. Like, I mean, I love asking my painter. 
I asked my, I'm like, Ooh, let's look at what he like, you know, and he knows a lot. And so we talk about it when I'm with a, you know, when I'm with a client and um, let me think who else. I mean, I just think it's fun to talk to people about it. And so if you have a friend who you think is good at color, get, the, and you want to show you want to get their feedback on your palette, please do. It's great. Or just hire a pro because guess what? We are working with it all the time. <laughs> Oh. And we know what some of these colors, they change over time. Like my painter would be like, well, he, yeah. Anyway, he, he tells me, he's like, that color turns yellow in two years, you know, certain whites. So, you know, sometimes you want to get that feedback because it's a big deal. Tina, yes, we should take Bagua colors into consideration. Look at her bringing the feng shui in. She's like, this is not enough for me. Yes, to an extent. But I don't want you to get too caught up on that. Because sometimes, here's, remember y'all, chi is first in a space, okay? Chi is first. And you can work around some of the colors in the Bagua with plants, okay? Um, we can talk about that a little. I don't know if that's today's conversation, but maybe this is a springboard for like an entire class on color and the Bagua and interior decorating all together. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's some palette inspirations I could not help to post. Now, I hesitated with making this black because look, this green is influencing these. All right. I, I just left it because this was the design that came up. And they're influencing each other a little bit. But if you could just take it away and you can see these different palettes. And aren't they pretty? I like all these, but some of y'all might not. I didn't do too many pastels. But look, this one's real neutral. But then that little pop of yellow goes a long way. So um, just heads up on that. So here's what I'm trying to tell y'all. If you love a flower in the Birmingham Botanical Garden, if there's a tree you love to see bloom every year, that's inspiration. If you go to Venice and you're obsessed with it and you take the best picture ever that you've ever taken, that's inspiration. There might be something in it. If you're like my daughter who literally will just look through cookbooks, especially if they have desserts and she's obsessed with presentation too, guess what? Maybe that's your palette, okay? You get to have fun, I promise. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna stop my screen share. Is I love seeing all y'all here. It's a good showing today. Um, before we move to layout, do y'all have any questions? The colors in which photo? Did you like the Venice one, Callie? I think you did. Yep, that's right. Let's We'll pull it back up. <laughs> Um, do y'all have any questions besides working with the Bagua? Because I feel like that's a whole nother class. Basically, if y'all have studied feng shui at all, there is a map to your home, okay, that goes over the floor plan and there's different areas of your life that relate to different things. And there are colors that are associated with each Bagua and life area, right? So it is very nice to look at the Bagua map if you're getting to redecorate your bedroom to make sure but I'm going to just say, I can't tell you in two minutes because I don't want y'all to go paint a purple bedroom if you're in the money, if you don't like purple. Like you can still do a gray bedroom. You just need some accents or something in that color because the intention will go far. Okay. You have to wait just one minute. Wait just one minute. Excuse me for that, y'all. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so nobody had any questions. I'm going to keep going then. I want to talk to y'all, though. I like to have a conversation, but it seems like y'all are good to keep going. So, oh, okay, Rachel, this is probably a question for one of the other sessions. I feel like feng shui is plenty of room for personal style, preference, symbolism, but there are sometimes trendy things in interior design, like the starbursts that seem like they aren't the best from a feng shui perspective. But if you love it, is there a way to find to use them in your home? 
<laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, she's saying she's saying, okay, well, let's just focus on all these starburst mirrors. Y'all, the starburst mirrors can work, but they can be sharp feeling. And in feng shui, they don't like sharp. So um, sometimes it depends on where you put it. I mean, if you're obsessed and you love it, pay attention to that. But sometimes we can love things that are a little bit harmful for ourselves. <laughs> Y'all know it's true. So I would want to see a picture of the starburst because there are some that work. I have seen starburst mirrors. I'm like, actually, those work because they, they can be really pretty and like a lot of energy, right? Um, so that's something to think about. I like the question. I think it's going to be more for personal symbolism, but I'm going to, if you want to post a picture of your starburst burst somewhere, we can use it as a uh, discussion. All right. All right. I'm going to screen share again. Let's go to layout. Okay, y'all. So here's the deal with layout. It means how you arrange objects in a space. So it's basically how you're laying out your furniture or even your paintings on your wall or, you know, your books on a shelf. We're going to do today the furniture in a space. Okay. Size matters. It does. And the reason I say that is because guess what? The first thing you need is a tape measure to get it right. So there's that saying like cut once, measure twice, or I measure eight times because I don't want to order a sofa for a client and it not fit. I would be kind of mortified, honestly. So um, I keep measuring <laughs> until I know. And um, I even sometimes like, you know what? I still want to get, I get the blue painters tape out and I mark it on the floor where it's going to be. And y'all see, I have graph paper here and a ruler and a pencil with an eraser because you will mess up and you will want to erase. All right. So let me show you what I do with this stuff. I'm just, we're going to hone in on the um, graph paper. So sorry, this is rough, but this is kind of how I do things. <laughs> so this is a room I was working on with a client. This right here, these marks right here are some... Um, <laughs> Oh, my word, my dog, y'all. I am so sorry. Thea, hey, come here. Come on. Um, sh okay, so these are, oh, hold on. I'm gonna just go put her in the back. This is not okay. Thanks. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> I didn't lose y'all. Y'all got time to look at this. <laughs> so I cut out pieces of paper. It, yes, I know it looks like kindergarten. <laughs> but, and I know people have all their fancy. That's probably easy online stuff. But y'all, I just like to do it like this. I like the tactile. Okay, I like to be able to move it easily, fit it where I want it. So these were different options of chairs. So you got to measure the room. You got to measure the furniture, okay? That you're thinking of using or that you already have that you want to keep using. And then use the graph paper to create a room to scale. So you have to do it to scale. Yep, you cut out the furniture and you play with the arrangements, okay? So you see that I have the dimensions all written down. What I'm thinking could work. What I found online or in stores that could work. And I just play with it. OK, so, you know, in this situation, we had do two sofas. She wanted a, you know, some kind of sectional type thing. Um, yeah, thank you, Tina. I've used the great graph paper method. Works great. I really appreciate that. I, I don't know why we don't need to reinvent the wheel on this. So here are some just me just playing. OK, I kind of throw these on for y'all to see. So 
let me just show you. This is, um, there's a fireplace here. This is a door to the outside. These are glass windows and then two glass doors that look out into a screened in porch. This is an open floor plan. This is the kitchen island right here. So you'll see the kitchen is behind you. I mean, on the bottom. And then this is the, there's a TV above the fireplace. Okay. And, oh, I love it, Amber. Yay. She's been doing this since she was a kiddo. And then you just start saying, okay, what could work in this space? Like it is a little tricky because it is open and there is, you know, there's two doors here. This is a walkthrough. This, this goes down to a hall. There's a whole kitchen. So, and then there's the feng shui principles you got to think of. So this is the sofa being pulled out to the wall, but then guess what? What is that space doing? That's a little, so here was the request. They've got two children. She loves light. And so she's like, I really want the space to be open. So that's just a little. Okay, sorry, this was turned around. If you see, this is the kitchen chairs right here. Here are the doors to the screened in porch. So this is just blocking the doors to the screened in porch, right? It just is. Like, that's a little tight to kind of come in and out. It just blocks the chi. That's chi flow, okay? These are supposed to be two chairs. And you can make it look better. You, I could put the arms on there and stuff like that. A little coffee table. I think that was a coffee table they had, maybe. Okay, so let me see what the next one is. Hold on. Okay, let's come back. All right, so this is what we ended up doing. So <laughs> this is kind of random, but her child wanted a big bean bag. <laughs> we put that over there. So these two chairs, they're a little bit more spread out than that. And they're probably smaller than that, actually. But um, we ended up getting a big leather ottoman. And there's a lot of open space. This sketch here is the rug so that we could keep it. So that rug keeps the seating arrangement arranged. And then we've got people can walk through. These are actually swivel, which I have mixed feelings on, but at least like they can turn around and look at the TV or they can turn around and, you know, talk to their mom while she's cooking. Um, and then we've got that open space out the door for the screened in porch and it keeps it airier. So, and then we're going to put two side tables with some lamps and um, a couple of little uh, kind of like laptop tables and a few little ottomans just to keep it soft. So um, let's see, anything can block chi. Okay. So I meant to have the picture I did, you know, just for fun. I'm like, let me take a picture of where the, the back of the sofa is, is to the kitchen and that can block chi because imagine like you don't want to have to turn your neck and to talk to people in the kitchen every time. But sometimes you do want the rooms to have two separate feelings. So you, you this will take you far, but you, sometimes you never know until you start placing this stuff in. But at least you will get measurements going, you know, because like I could see she wanted a big ottoman because they play games. And I'm like, well, let me see what will fit, you know. So we found one we liked and then that, and it fits. It actually looks really cool. And then they can put their feet on it too. Lots of boys in the family. So bigger people. Um, so this gives you a little heads up on how I, this was, I know this was quick, but um, I'm curious to see if y'all have any questions besides blocking the chi. It's a, anything can block chi. I mean, clutter blocks chi, you know? Um, you want chi to flow in a space. So you could put those things down on the graph paper and you can look to see like if there was a river flowing through, does it flow? You know, it's like you can draw little arrows. So that's kind of, that's kind of it y'all for today. I mean, this was very, we only have an hour. <laughs> um, but I wanted to give y'all a springboard to playing, right? I wanted you to be able to feel free to play. I mean, look what tools I gave y'all. This is what's sitting here next to me, okay? Literally, it's like, like, have fun with it. <laughs> get your colors out, get your little map out, and just start seeing what feels good to you. I mean, that's a lot of it. 
Um, I'm excited that um, y'all came today. Um, if you have any questions, you can unmute yourself because we got three minutes or write it in the write it in the thing. What you got? Leslie? Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody tell me at one time that you're supposed to do like sort of uh, a general and then your favorite colors only do 15% of the room in the colors do, do you have you ever heard of anything like that well i'm cracking up because i see you right now in your turquoise walled room oh, and yeah. i know that's your favorite color i know that's way more than 15 percent i know um, well this is more of a blue green than than real aqua yeah like yeah, yeah. aqua i say is what you've got in your scarf uh, yes um, yes but anyway so, i don't know it, it, so, yes i mean the kitchen would be like a junkyard to some people because it's got so many splashes of color all over it. Um, so here's the deal. There, there's people are going to say there's rules. And look, I'm kind of a person like it's good to pay attention to the rules, but who made those rules up? Number one. And number two, right. <clears throat> it's an art. <laughs> Interior decorating is an art form. So I get a little... I mean, listen, y'all, anybody can go make their house look like a pottery barn, you know, or restoration hardware. I mean, and those are good looks. They are. Um, and they have good items that will pull a space together. But you do you. You know, you do you. Um, Tina, let me see hers. Thanks, Leslie, for the question. Um, now that my roommate is gone, I am working on the guest room and meditation space. I bought these beautiful green convertible ottomans instead of a sleep sofa. I can't wait to finish the room and send you pics. Yay. I love it. Um, it's so much fun to be working on a space and to watch it. So I want to offer y'all a book that I used um, in the Odyssey, um, Joyful by Ingrid Lee. Y'all, If y'all are following me, I've quoted her. I might, I might even have done some kind of book review on her in my newsletter, but she's got a beautiful approach to decorating and design. And she, she's, she's kind of a secret feng shui person. She's not trained in it, but she gets it to an extent. Um, so I would highly recommend y'all reading her stuff. It is good. She's good with you, you doing you, you know, she's all about like design where design meets joy, that feeling of joy. Um, which is what I'm about to, and I think feng shui should be about. So um, I'm so glad y'all could make it today and we're gonna continue this conversation in a month. So if you have questions or if you're working on something, we're gonna focus on texture, shapes and patterns, which will bring in the elements a little bit. Um, that's the feng shui aspect of it. Today was a little bit more about the chi because color is such a strong, you know, I mean, it can, it's just chi, you know, color, color is, it's energy. It's just, we're translating it with our eyes. Um, thanks, Christine, for showing up. If there's, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on this. This is the first time y'all want to send me an email and tell me what you learned or didn't learn. <laughs> um, I'd love to hear what y'all thought of this since it's really my first time of teaching it in this way, but I hope y'all got something out of it. And thank you so much. Y'all are the best. I love seeing everybody. Always, always. Cheers.